and welcome back. So now that these two devices are configured to work together to share workloads, we'll take a closer look at those workloads. Now workloads are handled with traffic groups, and basically traffic groups are just a collection of IPs that float across a cluster, and any one device will actively handle at a time. For example, virtual addresses, SNATs, NATs, and floating self IPs will all be tied to a traffic group. Now there can be up to 15 traffic groups in a device service cluster, and up to 127 in future versions. And by default, there's traffic group local only and traffic group one. Now traffic group local only is as it sounds, IP addresses in these groups do not float across the cluster and are only active on the device where they're configured. All other traffic groups, one through 15, um, however, float between the devices for high availability. And as you can see here, this self IP is tied to traffic group one and traffic group one is active on big IP one. Now we can fail over this workload by having this forced to standby. And this big IP one has just become standby and traffic group one has migrated over to big IP two. Now you can see it's active here and we'll go ahead and force it back. Now this device will go standby and big IP one will be active again. All right, so to better help illustrate traffic groups, let's go quickly deploy some applications. Okay, great. So now we can start having some fun and carving off some of these addresses to place them in a second traffic group. Now first, let's go create a second traffic group. We'll call it traffic group two. And for illustration purposes, we'll just choose HA order. And this says, let's start the traffic group being active on big IP one and preferring to fail over on big IP two. And now we can start assigning some of these workloads to traffic group two. So typically, say we want all the www service to um, be migrated to traffic group two, we take the virtual address associated with that service and assign it to traffic group two. We uncheck that box and assign it to the floating traffic group two. Now, if that service had any snap pools related to it or associated with it, we would go to our snap translation list and go ahead and we don't have any currently listed, but we'd go ahead and do the same thing and assign it to traffic group two. Our particular virtual server is using snap automap. So we will go ahead and create some additional floating self IPs and have them dedicated to traffic group two. And we'll assign it to traffic group two. So now we have an additional floating self IP that can be used for the snap automap of that new service. Now, if you were to go to the traffic group section, you can see that this new traffic group has two objects associated with it. The virtual address, which we just assigned as well as the floating self IP. And now that all that is done, we're ready to go fail over this traffic group to the next device, big IP two. All 
and now Big IP2 is actively handling traffic group 2. And the device cluster is now in, currently in an active, active state. And that concludes this video. Thank you very much for joining.